guys and girls back in the fermented world channel again um, we're looking in on the peach mead this time so this is nice and clear um, it's got some bits floating around suspended in there which we're probably not going to be able to get rid of unless we sieve this out now i don't want to but i may as it's going to be a present for somebody and i don't really want them having little bits of crap floating around in it so we are going to rack this off today take a hydrometer reading and possibly bottle, um, depending on what it looks like once we've finished uh, racking. So first things first, that goes up there. <clears throat> oh, it's releasing little pockets of air now. <laughs> uh, lid off, or airlock, lid, whatever. I'm gonna put that in some sanitizing water over here because we may reuse it. And if we do, we are going to want it to be clean. So, this has already had stoppers in, I believe. I didn't write down that I'd put them in, um, but I'm assuming that I did, otherwise I wouldn't have put dried fruit in. Because if I had, the yeast would have just continued to ferment the sugars out of the dried fruit which would have then just been pointless putting it in, really. In tip. Let's speed this up. So we've got about three and a half litres of this. We've obviously lost some to the peaches, but that's life. So let's take us a hydrometer reading and see where we are at with that. Now, I don't think I added any honey to this. I believe I just put dried fruit in. And we'll see what's happened momentarily. So it's above the one line, which means the dry fruit has given it sweetness, natural sweetness. That puts us at the 10 mark, which is not very sweet, um, but it is sweet. Sugars that could have been fermented if the yeast was still active, but it's not because we put stoppers in. So let's have a little taste of that because if I remember rightly, I forgot to actually taste this. It smells nice. Hmm. That's odd. It does have a nice peachy taste to it, but doesn't taste like a mead let's um <clears throat> I've got one of these little pots here open so let's put a bit more in there and add a bit of honey and see what we get not too much just a little and then mix said honey into that to try and gauge if we are going to sweeten it. Because it, it's nice, but it's got a bit of a tinge to it. Like, like it's actually stronger than it is. But it can't be. Although it could be, yeah. Because we didn't take into account the tin of peaches that we put in at the beginning and any content that they had. So it said it was 14.9%, but I'd say it's stronger than that.
it has hidden that that flavor I was on about. So we're going to add some honey to this. I'm going to put that um, out of my way or I'm going to drink it. <laughs> it's only hump day. I'll drink it later when everyone's gone to bed. So we are going to back sweeten this. Um, I think I left it with just the dried peaches just to see what they gave to it. So we're going to add, uh, I'm going to say 200 grams for the amount of volume we've got there. Then we'll taste it. We'll see what it is, ah, what it tastes like. If it's nice, we'll leave it. If it's needing more, we'll add more. Always remember, you can always add, but you cannot take away. So that's uh, 637, so we need it to be at 437. It's surprising how much it gushes out and how much you actually get in. 512, we said 467, didn't we? 437, sorry. <clears throat> and again, this isn't a bad thing because it adds to the volume. So, you know. 435, that's close enough for me. So there's 200 grams of honey in there, which we're going to mix gently. Even though the ABV is quite reasonably high, we still don't want to oxygenate this at all. <clears throat> it seems to have uh, it's cleared out nicely. But we are going to be putting it back into the damage on. We're going to run some clean water through it and um, put it back in because it looks like it might even clear out more um, it's got a bit of a haze to it again now it might have picked up some of the lease from the bottom but good things come to those who wait and having an extra damage on on the side isn't really a bother is it although it was supposed to be for her birthday but such is life <laughs> you'll have to wait I mean, 200 grams of honey is not really that much, but it will bring it a nice hint of sweetness um, to get rid of that bit of a dankness almost. Like, you did get the fruit flavor, but there was also something else there. Not a harshness, right? And it wasn't particularly unpleasant, but I didn't like it. <laughs> Right, I believe that to be mixed in. So, again, hydrometer. So it's floating. That is jumped it up to twenty two four six. <clears throat> 200g honey 1.026 today's date is 7th possibly I'll adjust if it's not uh, okay so your I'll just put that back in there we need a little taste sample in a different glass to the other glass of course because the other one might have a different level in <clears throat> luckily I have many glasses Very good. Perfect. So, 200, 200 grams of honey. Now, we're going to go clean this vessel out. Or, 
I could just put it in the vessel that I've got clean over there already. So I'm going to do that because that will just make life easier. This is one of my newer Demijohns, which is why it's got no labels or thermometer on it. It doesn't matter about the temperature of this now because nothing's really going to harm it unless it gets crazy hot, which it won't in here. So, we are going to rack it off once again into a clean damage on. So as you can see, it has picked up a little bit of haze again, but that was expected. We've obviously kicked up a bit of the lease from the bottom we'll let this settle out and stick a label on it so we know what it is and a thermometer strip as well yeah i thought i had some spare ones and now we're back to rack this off have another taste because that's just what we do and we're going to bottle it it's cleared out again Loads more of the sediment that we'd caught in the last transfer has come out, so we literally are ready to bottle this. So up it goes onto the block and we rack. It's already got stoppers in, so we don't need to add anything to this. Peach mead and We rack. Speed it up. Oops, probably need to put that back in before I do this bit. Oh, here we go again. Crikey me. <laughs> Crazy weather. Anyway, we've got just shy of three and a half litres. So. I did do some extra bottles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do three litre bottles and probably go for a 500 ml bottle, I think. So let's uh, take a hydrometer. I know it's going to be the same as it was because it hasn't fermented any further. It should be at 1.026. But we just make sure to make sure that we're not going to bottle it and it carry on fermenting because that would be catastrophic because the bottles that we use for meads are not uh, able to take pressure because they're just basically water bottles yep 26 246 bang on the money let's get a little sample to taste flipping weather mate bonkers So a little look at that, nice and clear, got a good colour from the peaches as well to be honest. You can definitely tell the tin of peaches was in there as well. Uh, it was just something I had, I had used, had knocking around in the cupboard and I knew I was going to be doing a peach mead so I fermented it with the tinned peaches and the syrup and then we added the dried ones to it in secondary it's good in fact it's very good i actually wish i had more than i have i've got have got of it so what we're going to do is i'll tip this back in there And <coughs> we are going to attach this bottle wand to this. Like so. 
and all we're going to do is just going to I call it priming but basically we're just setting this up so that it's already got some in the um, the tubing because bottling with one hand sorry one pair of hands is a bit difficult so I do this fill the tube and then when you bring the bottle to it you'll see what I mean it makes a bit of a difference I mean we did lose a little bit of the liquid there but not a lot and we did dodge all of the little bits that were floating around in it as well which is good which is exactly what I wanted to do really a good old dodger rooney so we're done with that we're done with that um, still at the same gravity so we pull this down into there let gravity do its thing to get it all started and there we are we bottle give it a month or so and this will be ready to drink tasting lovely so to speed it up really That's then bottled off now. Um, we only got three, three liters, and if I hadn't spilt it all over the bloody place, messing about with the flipping funnel, um, we'd have probably got a 330 mil bottle anyway. But we've got it a little bit lower than uh, where I'd like it. So this is going to be my taster bottle. Uh, I won't give this to anyone because of the amount of headrooms that's there. So we're going to cap this off get these labeled up and send them over to the store where they can sit and chill for a month i say chill but it's not chilling it's just uh, somewhere for them to mature really and that's a wrap that is the peach mead complete it tastes bloody gorgeous um and yeah the recipe can be or should be able to be found on the original video for this uh, brew when we started it um, and this video will list the stuff that we added to it during the course of uh, this stage of it <clears throat> as we did it all in one foul swoop instead of a million videos we just did a couple because we had to rack it a couple of times to clear it out but yeah quite impressed with that not bad not bad at all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.